Castlevania, an all-time classic that sees Simon Belmont power his way through many enemies to get to Dracula and attempt to defeat him. The battle takes timing and patience as a single whip attack will only do a single bar's worth of damage. Unless it does more than that. A perfect storm of values in RAM, including flags, timers, and Simon's various states, help create a critical hit scenario that does considerably more damage with a single blow. Now you may think that this critical hit is random, but the only RNG involved is you. Time your hit correctly and you will land a critical hit every time. Let's examine the components that allow this to happen. We'll start with Simon's whip attack. Here we are at the beginning of the game. I haven't used the whip yet. I wrote a script to translate values in RAM to readable indicators and write them inside the blue box at the top. You'll notice whip with zeros for its level and location as well as length and height half values. I'll slow the game down and use the whip. Simon's attack uses a frame counter to keep track of where we are in the attack sequence, illustrated here with the progress bar. When the counter hits 17, and I marked the bar with a red box for that frame, the game now locates the whip for an attack and looks up the appropriate sizes for the whip I am carrying, which would be the level 0 starting whip. Now of course the sprites for the whip have been appearing as the timer ascends, but it isn't until this point that the game cares about where the whip is for collision math. It sets a flag on this frame to tell remaining logic to use this information for collision detection. If I move Simon, the whip's coordinates from the last attack remain in RAM. It isn't until I whip again and the frame counter reaches 17 that the whip is repositioned. Likewise, I can pick up the level 1 whip dropped by this pedestal and the size of the whip does not change in RAM until I use the upgraded whip. So the philosophy here is don't bother to load information relevant for collision detection until the collision frame is reached and don't bother to erase it from RAM when it becomes irrelevant after the collision frame has passed. Let's add more info up here. Simon has various action states. Each of them has an associated value, and Simon's action state in RAM can only be one of these values at a time. When he changes from one action to another, the logic flow for Simon's handler in code gets redirected to a different place. If that isn't enough, there is another state machine maintained in a separate place in RAM for Simon's attack. Huh. Multiple states independent of each other that are somewhat related. Some of you already know where this is going. If we take damage from an enemy, the states cycle through knockback, stunned, where he is unable to move for a few frames, and finally walking once again as the invulnerability timer, yet another location in RAM, wears off. Let's get hit by an enemy after using the whip just a little too late. Simon gets hit before his whip can hit the enemy, and the attack timer stops wherever it was in the sequence when the collision happened. Let's add some timers to our blue box. One timer, I'll call it timer 1, is used in multiple ways when Simon is knocked back. The first usage is to freeze him in place for a few frames immediately after he is hit. The timer keeps track of how long to freeze him. It is subtracted every frame until the value is negative, meaning it wraps from 0 to 255. At this point, he begins the knocked back animation. As he lands, he is stunned for 16 frames and this location in RAM is now used for that stun timer. Finally, the player regains control as the remaining and vulnerability timer is used for final recovery time. I'll tack on the timer values to the end of Simon's states where relevant and also add the recovery timer so you can see the counter for Simon's temporary invulnerability after getting hit. Now we have a better idea of the timing for attacking, taking damage, and recovery. Lots going on here. Multiple areas in RAM can be referenced by any subroutine in order to know what is going on with Simon at that moment in time. Some logic checks Simon's action for his current state, while other logic checks Simon's attack for his current state. So long as they are compatible with each other, it doesn't matter which of the two is referenced. But what if they're in conflict with one another? What if they get out of sync? The answer, at least in one particular case, is that a critical hit occurs. With that, let's jump straight to Dracula. To intentionally trigger a critical hit, the player should jump and use the whip to make contact with Dracula's head at the same time Simon is getting hit. Both must occur on the same frame. When this happens, the attack timer stops on frame 17, the collision frame. The whip is assigned a position. Simon is hit. His action is assigned knocked back, and his freeze timer kicks off to freeze him in place before animated knockback begins. 
Despite this state change, his jumping whip attack for his attack state is not cleared as part of the transition. We are, for a brief period of time, in a bugged state. Let's add Dracula's health to the blue box and see what happens. As long as the freeze timer is counting down, Simon is stuck in this bugged state. The logic determines that this is a collision frame and continues to deal damage to Dracula, reducing his health from 28 to 4 over the course of the next few frames. It isn't until the freeze timer is complete that the attack state is cleared. This resolves the bug state and completes the so-called critical hit. Let's examine what happens in more detail and attempt to isolate how things went wrong. I'll walk the logic using a high-level method with milestones rather than go line by line of code. There is so much work that is done across multiple frames that we would take forever to code walk it and touch upon all the relevant areas. So we'll do a frame by frame overview of sorts. Our blue box shows values as they were after processing a single frame. I'll walk through what happened during that frame in the order they were executed. Just before our whip collision frame, frame 16, Dracula has a health value of 28. Simon is in a jumping air attack action and has used the whip the whip timer is being incremented every frame as part of Simon's handler logic. We just incremented the timer to 16. After it is incremented, it checks to see if we should set up a whip size, location, etc. or not. Did Simon use the whip? He did. Next check. Is he on the whip collision frame? No. We're on frame 16 instead of 17. No whip positioning is done. Therefore, collision for an attack is irrelevant. Let's roll to the next frame. Ah, the whip timer is incremented to 17 and later the whip logic sees that Simon is in an attack state and that we are indeed on whip timer 17. So, we start our logic to prepare for collision checks that occur later on. It assigns a whip location and size. A little further down, it sets the whip damage frame flag to zero. A zero means this is a whip hit frame. FF means don't bother with whip collision. We set it to zero so Logic later on in this same frame knows to perform collision checks against hittable entities. In fact, let's add an asterisk to our blue box that illustrates when this flag is set for a given frame. After setting up the whip and signaling that this is a collision frame, Simon's Logic then sees that Simon got hit, assigns a freeze timer value of 4 and sets his action state to knocked back and does not clear the attack state. What have we learned on this frame so far? We analyze the whip timer and set the flag so collision detection will be executed versus enemies later in this frame and then changed Simon's action to knocked back. That means that logic flow allows us to deal damage to Dracula and get knocked back on the same frame. This could have been an instance of having to prioritize either a whip attack or starting our knockback logic, but Castlevania's code design allows both to happen on the same frame. The bug is simply the fact that we did not clear Simon's attack at the moment we assigned the knocked back action. That's it. We'll address this part later. Let's follow the remaining logic for the critical hit. So a bit later, while processing this same frame, the collision detection for Dracula activates because that damage flag indicates that, yeah, time to apply damage if the whip connected with Dracula's head. It subtracts four from his health, which is now at 24. For this frame, the logic is accurate as far as desired results. For the next frame, Simon's logic now uses the knocked back handler. It is directed elsewhere versus where it went for the jumping air attack action in prior frames. But wait a second, since Simon's action is no longer one that is attacking, we don't execute any code to continue incrementing the attack timer. We just abandon it. It is stuck on frame 17, the collision frame. Simon's logic says no attack thanks to his action, yet the collision setup logic looks at his attack state and therefore uses different criteria to determine that he is attacking. That means we locate the whip again. That means we set the collision flag again. Then Dracula's handler again says, oh hey, we're getting hit, subtract four. This process repeats as the freeze timer goes two, one, zero. Dracula's health gets subtracted every single frame. Simon's knockback handler continues to decrement his freeze timer value until after it rolls negative. The value finally rolls negative and Dracula has yet another 4 subtracted from his health one last time. Finally on the next frame, Simon's knockback handler sees that the freeze timer is negative and proceeds to the knockback sequence, which includes 
finally clearing the attack state here. That is what frees us from this attack Dracula every frame bug. A fun bug, but a bug. Just like that, Simon's states are in agreement once again. So, how about fixing it? The best place, in my opinion, right at the action state change to knocked back. When the logic changes Simon's action state from jumping air attack to knocked back, it should also write a zero to his attack state to clear it. Unfortunately, it does not. I don't really have a convenient place to cram a line into the code with a game genie. Ideally, after you load a value of zero into the accumulator here, you write that zero to addresses 514, 488, and then 434, Simon's attack state, right here, just before writing a five to his action to place him in knockback. If we could just squeeze a line in there with a few game genie codes, that would be great. For the sake of illustration, we'll just handle things manually. If I load my save state for a critical hit and place a breakpoint for the attack state change, I can zero out the attack state manually in RAM when the code stops here. We got hit, so did Dracula. The freeze timer counts down with Simon not in an attack state. Dracula was only hit once. The freeze and knockback completes having only subtracted four, the damage of a single whip attack from Dracula's health. While perhaps not as useful as with Dracula, Simon can utilize this critical hit to one-shot a bone tower by landing the whip attack at the same time he takes damage from a fireball. Of course, there are other ways to do excessive damage, but I think that's enough for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video covering the critical hit of the whip in Castlevania. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. I also have a Patreon available if you are interested, and thanks for watching. <laughs>